Hey, in my video 50, which I published just a few days ago, I was explaining uh, how testers are supposed to uh, validate the product and find the bugs there and then give information to project managers when is the right time to deploy the product. And I showed you a small diagram explaining how the code gets from you know, personal laptops of developers to the master branch and then to production and to live branch and all that. And I got many questions about that. How exactly should it work? First of all, you have a master branch. This is the model which I use and I'm not saying that this is the only one solution. I'm not saying this is the right way. I'm just saying that this is the way it works for me and I think this isn't quite effective. And I explained this formula of deployment in the book which I published last summer, Code Ahead. There's an entire section dedicated to this um, explanation. First of all, you have a master branch where all the developers commit their code. Everything they do goes into the master branch. Here's the line with the red dots. They are red because we're not sure that the code is perfect there. Of course, before you can push something to the master branch, you have to go through the merge pipeline. The pipeline which includes static analysis, um, unit testing, integration testing, code reviews, a number of code reviews, some lints, some automated checks, which will confirm that the code is good enough not to break the continuous integration, which is configured for the master branch. So master branch is technically stable, but it is not good enough for end users because we need some sort of manual testing. We need some people to look at it and tell us where it's broken, where are the mistakes, which can be found only by people. What happens next is that at one point of time, at any point of time, it's the decision which programmers make or the architect makes, we create a release candidate branch. I call it RC51. 51 is just a number. You can number them like RC1, RC2, RC3, or you can give them any names. But RC means release candidate. That's the branch which you branch out from the master branch. And then you deploy the product which is in the release candidate to some staging environment, to some place where testers can manually check what's going on there and find problems there. And then they start working on that. Your testers start testing, start breaking that release candidate, start finding problems there. And that's why the color is orange, because the more they find errors, the more we fix those errors, the more orange, the better it becomes, the more stable this, this version of the product becomes for us. And it takes some time. And you may have a number of release candidates. You may have 51, 52, 53. They may go parallel if you have enough testers, if you have enough testing teams or testers who can do that. And uh, they may stay there for some time, from a few days to maybe a few weeks, maybe up to 10 days or two weeks. Maybe two weeks is the maximum period, which I've seen. The best time is like five days. So you start it on Monday and on Friday, you do something with this release candidate. You make a decision what to do with it. And the decision will be made by managers, by maybe the architect, by somebody who is staying on top of testers and programmers. Testers will be breaking the release candidate, programmers will be fixing release candidate, making commits not to the master branch, but now to release candidate branch. So every time a tester finds a problem in release candidate, the programmer has to fix that problem and make the commit, make the fix to release candidate, not to master, but to release candidate. So release candidate goes like a separated, isolated branch where we try to stabilize what we created in the master branch. Some features, some functionality, something which testers find and programmers fix. And then at some point of time, we make a decision what to do with the release candidate. If the amount of bugs that testers find every hour or every day goes down, that means the release candidate gets more stable. And we can visually see that what we have there, the version of the product is stable enough to go to production. Not testers confirm that, but the project manager, the, maybe the architect, looks at that stuff and says, yeah, it seems that you guys cannot find as many bugs as you were able to find when we started the release candidate. Now you find way less every hour. And then the release candidate goes to the live Git branch. I call it live. You can call it whatever you want, but this is the Git branch which contains the code in exactly the same version which we have on production platform, on production servers. And we tag it there like 1.14. We, we had 1.13 before and now it's 
14. That's the new version. You tag it there. You put the git tag there and then the deployment uh, machine deployment pipeline starts and then it takes the code from live branch and puts it to your live service to production service. If the release candidate is good enough for that. And of course, when it happens, you merge it back to the master branch. You get all the changes which happen there and you try to merge it to master branch. You will have problems with that, of course, because you made many commits on the release candidate and somebody still was working on the master branch. So you will have to do the merge operation. You will have to merge uh, the release candidate into master. That will take some time, of course. And then you start another release candidate and you continue the cycle again. A number of problems which may happen on this model, actually three problems. The problem number one is that uh, at some point of time, you may realize that release candidate is not good enough to go to production, that the testing team is breaking and breaking and still breaking. And there are so many bugs that we, we, we cannot allow ourselves to put that uh, bad code, bad product to production. So what do we do with that? Because we spend a week on breaking the release candidate, on testing it, and we made many fixes there. So what do we do with the changes? Then you just merge it to the master branch and don't put it to production. Don't put it to the live branch. And it's a pretty normal situation. In my experience, that happens like once out of five, six candidates. You start it, you test for five days, you see that guys, programmers, you didn't manage to create something stable enough or good enough for us to uh, to, to put to production. So sorry about that. We tested, we confirmed that it's broken completely. Just get it back, take it back, put it to the master and keep working. Keep working until you're ready to start a new release candidate. And even sometimes you may have situations when you just completely abandoned release candidate branch. Like you started testing, you tried for a few days and you see that it's complete garbage and uh, all the changes we've made there, we don't even want to see them in the master branch. So you just completely abandon that, just delete the branch and forget about that code. It may happen as well, very rarely, it should happen rarely, but it may happen. Another problem is that, like I mentioned, you may have big problems of merging release candidate back to the master branch. When the release candidate branch is huge and you made many changes during this week of testing and you made like 50 or 100 changes there, you modified so much code and master branches was still in development at that time and you cannot merge them basically. So it's so difficult. There are so many merge conflicts that you cannot put release candidate back to the master. To solve that problem, I would recommend uh, to configure your uh, merge pipeline that every time you merge something into release candidate, you automatically merge the same commit, git commit, into master branch. So they have to go parallel at the same time while you're working on release candidate. Every time the commit goes into RC branch, it goes automatically to the master branch. And if it cannot go there, then the machine, the merge bot, will tell you, will tell the developer that I cannot merge your stuff into RC branch because it's not mergeable into master. So basically you break down the larger problem of a large merge conflict into 50 different conflicts, into 50 different problems. And then you put these problems to the shoulders of your programmers. So now all programmers who work on the RC branch will have problems merging stuff there because they will have to make sure that their stuff is uh, mergeable with the master branch. And yet another problem which you will face with this model is what to do with the hot fixes. Let's say the production is broken. Let's say you have some code on live and then the customer calls you and says that we need to make something immediately right now. You don't have time to start the release candidate, to deploy it to staging environment, to ask the testing team to break it and then wait for a few days or a week and then release it and then go the full cycle. So you need to make the immediate hot fix to the production version. In that case, you just commit your changes to the live branch. Just right there, you just make a tag 1.14.1, you make your commit to the live branch, and then the deployment pipeline starts, gets your 1.14.1 1 uh, release tag, and that tag goes to a production server. So that's how it works. It may work for a small team, it may work for a large team. I see it working with a team of about 50 
technical people, developers, managers, architects, uh, testers, about 50. And we had like a few release candidate branches going in parallel, like two or three at the same time. It may work for a larger team as well. I'm not sure. I don't have experience of a team of 200 people. I don't know. But for a small and medium team, that's a perfect schema, in my opinion. That's simple. It's easy to understand and I don't see any big problems with that. If you know any of them, please leave your comment below. We'll discuss. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for listening. Stay tuned. Bye-bye.